This video is going to show you how to run an exploratory factor analysis in R. As usual, we need to install some packages. The packages we're going to use are Psych. So this is a psychometrics package. It's a fantastic package. There's a huge range of things. We're going to use it for an exploratory factor analysis today. It does a principal components analysis. It does all reliability analyses and so on. So it's a very useful package to have. The VDAS package, we're going to use that to produce a Kaiser Mayer Olkin test and Bartlett's test. And these are just going to be um, two assumption tests. And we're going to use an Excel spreadsheet. And um, so we're going to use the read Excel package. You don't need to install these every time. If you installed them once before, you just simply need to pull them out of your library for each session. So the data set we're going to use, this is its location on my computer. Of course, this will be different from yours. And it's called ATGC XFA for exploratory fact analysis, Excel. And we're just going to refer to that. Our data frame is just going to be ATGC. So what is ATGC? Well, I'll show you the data and here it is. It's a nine item questionnaire in which all the items are measured on a one to four scale from strongly disagree to strongly agree. And it measures attitude towards goat's cheese. In my opinion, goat's cheese is an elaborate joke that's being played on me because I cannot understand how anyone can possibly eat something that tastes so awful and I'll eat anything. So in order to try and understand why the hell anyone would want to eat goat's cheese, I created um, a Likert scale that was asking people about the taste of it, um, its texture, its smell, how it's really hard to avoid as a vegetarian starter, how it's always on conference dinner menus and just generally how awful it is. And we've got people to respond to those items. So what we're interested in, what our factor analysis, our exploratory factor analysis is going to do. We're going to see if these items group into factors. So for example, does items one, two and three all measure a similar underlying factor? For example, if these questions are related to taste, that could pick out factor of taste. If those three are all related to its smell, they'd be a factor of smell and so on. So I'm just going to attach that so we don't need to put it into any of the commands later on. First thing we're going to do is compute Bartlett's test of sphericity, which we want to be significant. And we're also going to do the Kaiser Meyer Olkin measure, which we want to be above 0.7. There are some more subtle cutoffs for that. So we just run that. And there we go. It's scientific notation here. But to the power of minus 16, so that decimal is moving a long way over, so it's highly significant. And our KMO gives us a test statistic of 0.78. So we could report this um, in text as well, just so the reader knows that we've the bar that's test of sphericity, it's significant, so we report chi squared degrees of freedom and the p value. And we can just report KMO equals 0.78, so we know we've got adequacy there as well. So the first thing we're going to do is try and work out how many factors there are, how many underlying factors there are. There's several different ways to do this. And in a subsequent video, I'm going to show you how to do a parallel analysis, which is one way of working out how many underlying factors there are. I'm going to show you a different measure. This is going to use what's called Kaiser's rule. And Kaiser's rule is eigenvalues that are greater than one represent a valid factor. So to do this, we're going to do a factor analysis on our attitude towards goat's cheese data frame we've got there. And we're going to ask it to pull out nine factors. And what we're doing here, we're saying we want nine factors because we've got nine items in our data set. So we're not going to interpret things like factor loadings or anything like that. We, we're just interested in the eigenvalues that this analysis is going to give us to try and work out how many valid factors that we have. And rotation is not important here either. But I'll just put it in here because we're going to use knobbling and rotation later on. As you can see, I've put a list of all the different forms of rotations that you can use. And you just basically, according to what the nature of your data is, the size of your sample and so on, that's how you'd make a decision of which one we're going to use. I'm going to be using an oblique rotation because I assume there's going to be some correlation between factors. For example, if one's taste and smell, you'd assume those would be quite highly correlated with each other. So we're going to run this. And we're not interested in a lot of this. What we're interested in 
is this sum of squared loadings, which are our eigenvalues. Now, Kaiser's rule says if an eigenvalue is greater than one, it's a valid factor. So this has produced nine factors, and we have one, two, three factors that are greater than one, and then we've got a really steep drop off on the eigenvalues. And you can see our three factors actually also account for a relatively similar proportion of variance, 20% of variance for that one, 20% of variance for that one, 20% of variance for that one. And there's cumulus of variance, it gets added up along here. It doesn't add up perfectly, but that's just due to rounding. But those three factors um, account for about 58% of variance. We don't really need to look at factor loading for anything else here. All we need to do is go, okay, if we're using Kaiser's rule, three factors. Because our eigenvalues after that for factor four is a huge drop off, nowhere near one. So now we just need to rerun the analysis and then we do exactly the same thing but now we fix it to three factors so now it's going to say okay we've got three factors in this data set and then we can interpret our factor loadings so we simply run this again and you'll see we do get slight changes in these that's, that's simply because we've set it to three rather than nine now what you can see here is our standardized pattern matrix. This is our factor loadings and we've done an oblong in the rotation. So how do we interpret this? Well, essentially what these numbers are are the correlation between the item and the factor. Ideally for a questionnaire, you really only want items to load onto one of your factors. Now, People use different rules for what represents a valid loading. In this case, we're going to say if the loading is above 0.5, that's a valid loading. So if you look at item one here, very low loading here, very low loading here, but it does load onto this third factor highly. Two, low, low, over 0.5 again. Three, low, low, over 0.5, so it's loading. So these three, all load onto this factor here. So all these three make up one of your factors. Now for the next three, four, five, and six, they load together on this factor, but really low loadings on the other one. And finally, item seven, eight, and nine, they load highly onto this factor and don't load onto those at all. So we can see we've got a three factor solution and those items load very cleanly onto our three separate factors. So each of our factors is made up of three items. And we've got our sum of squares loadings, our eigenvalues for each of those factors, the amount of variance each of those factors predicts. It's a really nice clean 19% for each of our factors. Very rare you're going to get something this clean. It's this clean because I made this data set for this example. And overall, those factors account for 57% of variance. And there's your correlations between the factors as well. So it's just a correlation matrix. Another nice thing that you can do is create a figure for this. So we're just going to save our fact analysis now as an object that we're calling M1. And then we ask for a fact analysis diagram for M1. And we can title it ATGC, or you could you know, give um, factor loadings for the attitude towards go to cheese questionnaire. You can give it the full title there. So if you run that, so this produces a little diagram for factor loadings, what the items that load onto those factors are. And it shows the correlations between our factors when they are 0.3 or above, so when they're a moderate correlation. You can change the settings on that to show more, to show to different decimal places and so on.